Well folks, welcome back to my humble wee fishing channel. It's been a long winter, even for those lucky enough to escape a bit of it abroad. But this channel is about the kind of fishing anyone can enjoy. Fishing on your home patch or thereabouts. Now is the season start on my home patch and my first video of 2023. I'm lucky enough to have this nice river just a short walk from my house. Travel is great but there's no place like home. Today as I speak to you it's the 17th of March and the brown trout season opened two days ago. Now normally I try to honour that opening day but this year I missed it. The weather was pretty foul and having just travelled home from New Zealand a few days earlier I was still jet lagged and not firing on all cylinders. I'm getting too old for this international jet setting and stuff. No really I am. But that's not a problem, I'm happy enough to fish closer to home now and I didn't really realise it until this last trip. Anyway, with the river coloured up from yesterday's rain and the water very cold from the severe frost earlier this week, I plan not to fish today either. Instead I take a walk with the camera and shoot some fresh b-roll for the first video of the year. B-roll by the way is any incidental footage that is not only the main video so it's supplemental or alternative footage intercut with the main footage. It's a term we are below to with movie executives use all the time. So there I am b-rolling away when I hear a splash. A trout rose and a good trout at that. Sure enough there was a small folly of large dark olives hatching and a few trout responding. So it's long. I'm there with two cameras and zero fly rods. I could have rushed home for a ride, but hell, nothing is ready and I've been there before. Rushing is not the route to enjoyable fishing. Not for me anyway. I have some family commitments for the next few days, so the trout will have to wait. They will still be there in a couple of days, but will they be willing to rise? Because of the magic of video, my couple of days will be your couple of seconds, so please stick with me and we shall see you together. See you shortly. Right, so here we are out again, it's a couple of days later and to be honest it's not such a fine day today, it's cloudy, there's a cold easterly wind blowing, or maybe a south easterly, but it feels quite raw and cold, so I'm kind of hoping we've got a wee bit of sunshine and a bit of warmth to encourage a few flies to hatch and see if we can get these rising fish again. But I'm not too hopeful, but we shall see. So anyway, I'll switch it off for now and switch you back on again once I reach the river. And we'll see how it goes. Right, so here we are. Now this is the pool that the fish were rising in the other day. No sign in at the moment, but I can't see any flies hatching. It's maybe just a bit in the cold side at the moment. I think the temperature's about 8 degrees and it feels, well basically it feels like winter. I know there have been a couple of anglers out over the last two days, so it may be that they've been here and caught the fish. I've no idea. But that's just part of fishing in a club water. You never know who's going to be out in front of you. So I'll maybe just try a couple of speculative casts. Incidentally, if you watch my videos, those who've been watching my videos over the last couple of years will probably recognise this as the place where I caught my first couple of fish of the season over the last two seasons. So is history going to repeat itself? 
at the moment I would say probably not but we shall see so I'll maybe just try as I say try a couple of speculative casts just have a wander upstream and see if we can see any sign of action this is actually the ideal type of water for this time of year these long smooth glides good bit of depth the water isn't too fast and about the head of the, the pool there's a, there's a wide riffle and that's where the olives tend to hatch in the, in the riffled water and then they glide down here so that's the, the that's the theory anyway and I'm sticking to it A single dry fly on a large dark olive representation, which always does well for me here at this time of the year. We shall see, have a couple of speculative casts. There's no sign of any movement whatsoever. And as I said, the fish I saw here rising the other day could be, or well, could be caught. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Don't see any flies hatching. They're really obvious on this glassy water when they make an appearance. What I really should have done a couple of days ago, I should have gone up the road, dumped the cameras and come back with a rod. <laughs> but to be frank, I couldn't be bothered. It's my terrible, terrible attitude showing through again. Fishing, it's often just a, a case of taking your chances when they arise. And if you're too daft or too lazy or whatever, too whatever, you may miss your chance. And that's especially true early in the season. When hatches can sometimes be really short lived, just minutes sometimes, you get a flurry of flies which will bring the fish on. And then they stop hatching and then the fish stop rising. So you've got a very narrow window of opportunity. So what do we do now? Do we just go for a wander? Or do I keep fishing blind and risk putting any potential fish here down? I don't know, I'll have a couple of casts. Put the other side of this lovely flowering gorse bush. There's usually a fish or two lies in here. Oh my goodness, that's a cold wind. Right, I'll see if I can cross here with it falling in. That's, I think the river's up a, a few inches compared to a couple of days ago. We'll have had some overnight rain. And it's got a slight tinge of colour about it. But then it did a couple of days ago as well, and that certainly didn't stop the fish from rising. Oh, that current's strong. And this big flat here often has a fish or two rising in it. But of course they're only going to rise if there are flies to rise too. And so far I haven't seen any. At this time of year, it's always large dark olives here, which would be about Cook size 14. So they're fine and big and quite obvious when you see them. Well, the winter floods have altered this pool a bit. They've dumped a half a tree or something <laughs> just over there near the other side. That could cause problems. 
Put a weed in the other one. The only problem here is from here on up the water is a, it's kind of fast, which in the summer is exactly what you want, but not at this time of the year. I always find that most of the feeding fish tend to be in the slacker water, probably because it requires less energy expenditure to sit in there and feed. I don't know. Quite a gloomy day. But having said that, it's nice to be out and about again. You can do all the travelling you like, but at the end of the day, there's no one beats the home patch. The river looks really good at the moment and I'm sure if it wasn't so cold we would see a few fish moving. Anyway there's another big glide and a flat up here. I'll switch it off for now and switch it back on when I reach there. So here we are and even this normally placid pool is moving through quite fast at the moment. So much glare on the water, I can't see if there are any flies. But judging by the lack of rising fish, I would say probably not. The other day when I was down here, and I saw the risers, it was about half past 11 in the morning, which for this time of year is quite early for our eyes to come on, but no doubt it was just due to the warmer weather and the blinks of the warm sunshine. It certainly felt a lot warmer than it does today. It's often mid to late afternoon before they get a hatch at this time of year. Certainly on this river anyway. Although I've got no doubt everybody will have their own experiences and might argue with that. <laughs> It just looks great. It's always interesting to have a first visit to the river after the, the long cold season, the, the long cold lonely winter. You see what the floods have done, and how they've reshaped things. The river marks here are all sand, they're very, very soft, so the river can cut into them quite easily. But having said that, it doesn't seem to have caused too much damage this year. It hasn't caused major alterations, and boy, we had some big floods. Towards the end of the autumn, beginning of the winter, I can't remember the exact time, the river came within, literally, a couple of centimetres of a record high according to the the SEPA graphs for the monitoring station so all, all this area here was all under water all these green fields quite awesome to see actually but such a a placid timid wee burn could turn into a raging torrent within 24 hours Scary actually. And you wonder what happens, happens to the fish. Obviously they can't stay in the main current, so the fish had been swimming up here on the banks, I guess. And then as the water dropped, they slowly moved back into their normal homes and normal lives. The brute the the broom, so we said broom the gorse. It's starting to look good. There's seldom a time of year when it doesn't have a flower on it. In the next month it will reach its peak. It's so pretty. Beautiful. 
bloody nuisance puncturing your wearers <laughs> but it's nice to look at it's everywhere in New Zealand as well certainly on the South Island anyway it's just everywhere it was it reduced to provide fencing for livestock and of course it's just taken over We've seen all that crew over there, we better hope the Kiwis don't take revenge on Scotland and send their own prickly bush over here. I think called Matagauri, and oh my god. You can imagine a, a short stubby bush or rapier sticking out of it all over. Unbelievable. So we better hope we don't end up getting that sent over here as a, a revenge in ways of introduction. <laughs> now, if I was going to see any fish rising, I reckon it would be in water like this. But no sign of anything just now. So I'll just continue to wander around. seen any mallards yet, which is a kind of odd. Maybe the local farmers organised a big mallard shoot during the winter time. Got a little bit of bloody things. <laughs> oh, I'm only kidding. That's it, quite lovely. It's just lovely to see wildlife. Now that's interesting, I just saw a wee flurry of olives coming down, so a pear coming down there, I don't know if they're actually a, a marital pear or not. There's a pair of them came down there. The thing is, these, these large dark olives are so big, you see them a mile off, there's one there, flattened, but not, no fish rising you know. off. What I think I'll do is you go and sit on my rear end down beside this this uh, support pipe, uh, support pillar for the pipe and just watch the water for a while Let's see what I can see well, that's encouraging to see some flies hatching what time is it? yeah it's just a bit just after midday so that is encouraging Oh yeah, there's loads coming down now. It's another couple there. I'll switch off for now and switch it back on again something. See how bright it's suddenly got. That's often a, a trigger for a hatch. Right, I'll switch it back on again happens. Yeah, there are still a few flies hatching, but no movement of any fish yet. It sometimes takes them a while to get keyed in. There's another roll of coming down just in the middle there. But it's just a steady stream. We hardly call it a blizzard hatch. But it's a, there are enough there to trigger the fish in action eventually. As I said earlier, maybe some of the guys have been down here and caught them already. I'm sure all these guys fish catch and release the same as I do. The vast majority of people do nowadays. But it sometimes takes a couple of days for things to settle down. If a, a stretch of water's had a bit of a hammer and it takes a, a few days for things to settle down again. But so far, nothing happening. Well, still a, a continual small flurry of olives coming down. There's still nothing moving. I don't know if you can hear all the shouting that's going on behind me. 
or not. We're, we're a couple of miles from the village here. And every, every weekend I have Sunday football leagues in the local park. And it's so still and the wind, what wind there is, is in exactly the right direction to bring every kick of the ball across the fields down to the river. It's not annoying or anything like that, but it's just quite, quite funny. What I might do, it's very, very tempting just to fish the water here, and I might bring a fish up, but it's highly unlikely if they're not coming up for the naturals, there's precious little chance of them coming up for your artificial. So what I'll maybe do is have a wander downstream quarter mile or so down to the next flat which is very similar to this and just check that out and then come back up here again yeah that's what I'll do switch off for now right so here we are and all of there. Getting really excited about seeing individual olives going down. How sad is that? There's still no sign of any fish rising. Just watch the water for a wee while. Now in common with other small streams throughout lowland Scotland this one can be a bit hard to access, especially as the season goes on and the vegetation gets high. This top beat here is always open like this, thanks to the cows grazing it. So the, the cows are about a, a double-edged sword. They, they, they do keep the vegetation and the banks down a bit and make it easier for anglers to access, especially old, old codgers like me. On the other hand, they erode the banks badly. Crap in the water, I mean, heaven knows what the water quality is like in here. It looks superficially, it looks okay. I'm not so sure if we'd be drinking it, even if we was dying of thirst. And all that said, at this time of the year, it's probably the best time to fish for the rest of the river because the backside vegetation is dead low. It's actually quite attractive, daffodils and snowdrops and all sorts of stuff growing. It's very pretty. But by late May, it's just machete country. And by midsummer, oh my god, you got head high Himalayan balsam and nettles. The Himalayan balsam is a, quite a recent thing. There was none of that here when I was a kid and used to fish this in, back in the 60s and the early 70s. There's was no Himalayan balsam, so it's obviously been introduced since then. Probably for private gardens further up. You can see why people would plant it. It's very it's fast growing and very, very pretty. But oh my God, it's a, it's a menace. Not quite the same menace level as Japanese knotweed or giant hogweed, we still would be, we'd be, we would be better without it. Tongue twisted there. So right, back to the fishing, no sign of any fish rising here either. So I'll maybe cross over and go back up the other side and go back up to the pool when I saw the fish rising a couple of days ago and just sat about there for a while. I don't know how long to stay. It's always, always a limit to how long, especially when it's cold as this, to how long you can sit around to effectively do nothing. But you've always got in the back of your mind is that the minute you leave, the rise will start. So I don't know. Probably wimp out before too long. Yeah, still a few olives coming down. There's another couple there. 
still no sign of any fish rising. Anyway, I'll switch off for now and switch it back on again a bit later. Now the fish just rose. Just down about there, as I was approaching this pool. I don't know if it's seen me or not. But to get a cast to it, I'll have to wade around this corner. So you can do this without getting drowned. That's quite encouraging. Oh, another one of those. It could be the same fish, actually. No idea if it'll be moving around there or what. Probably very little chance of catching this one, but it's encouraging to see a fish rise. Don't know what this camera is pointing at here. That covered it just about perfectly actually, and it didn't show any interest. Well, wind's blowing the fly all over the place. Doesn't seem to be too impressed with this. The funny thing is, I can't see any flies on the water here. So they might be taking hatching nymphs. I think I might arrest this one for 10 minutes and have a quick look downstream. It certainly hasn't risen again. I think that's what I'll do. Actually, that fish just rose again, so I've got to cast it again. Nope, I'm going to slide down straight. Well, there was nothing rising down there, despite a really good solid hatch of flies. So I'm back up to the place where I've, the only place I've seen a fish rise, and it rose again just as I approached. And I got a bit of a look at it. I don't think it's, I think it's very big, but beggars can't be choosers. Right, I've changed the, fl the fly, I've put a slightly smaller olive pattern on and I've also shifted position so I can see if we can see a bit better. The fish has risen another twice. There's another one. Now that fish rose, but not to my fly. There was a natural beside my fly that took that one did up. Oh, and it's away. That's a pity. I worked hard for that one. <laughs> and it was just on and off. Dash. <laughs> well, that'll be that then. But certainly the change of fly, I slightly I moved from a 14 down to a 16. 
that certainly did the trick there. I'm not sure if that was the same fish as, as, if, as I was going for earlier. Dash. <laughs> Flipping heck. Yeah, well, no point in crying over spilt fish. Move back down again. And maybe come back here again in half an hour or so. Well folks, I've done a bit more wandering and sitting around, but no more action. The wind has got up a bit more and it really feels run out. What flies there were appear to have stopped hatching. It might be I'd have a bit more luck when nymphs are swinging wet flies, but I came out to fish the eyes and the eyes is what I'd rather fish. So I'll call it a day at that. It was a difficult few hours fishing and despite a reasonable hatch of flies, I saw only one fish rise. After persisting with that fish, a change of fly size was enough to tempt it, although I lost it straight away when it jumped. Still, I'm happy enough with that. This time of year, it can be great one day and dire the next. It all just comes down to the weather. It was just great to be out in the home patch again. So I'll close the video there, and if you stayed with me to the end, then thanks for watching. I hope to see you all in the next video, whenever that may be. Bye for now.